This video is your Dragon of Icebuyer Peak DM guide for the Umbridge Hill quest from the D&D Essentials Kit. Hi, Bob here, and welcome to Bob World Builder, the D&D channel where we improve our games together. Subscribe for new videos every Wednesday under your subscriptions tab. Before we dive in, if you're looking for gameplay of the Umbridge Hill quest, you can check out my session in the cards and description. Okay, here's the prompt that the characters find on the Fandolin job board and that the players receive on the quest card. The local midwife, an acolyte of Shantea named Adabra Gwyn, lives by herself in a stone windmill on the side of a hill a few miles south of Fandolin. With dragon sightings becoming common, it's not safe for her to be alone. Urge Adabra to return to Fandolin. Once she's safe, visit Townmaster Harbin Wester to claim a reward of 25 gold pieces. Umbridge Hill is one of the three starter quests, and I strongly recommend using it as your party's first adventure in the Dragon of Icebuyer Peak. The other two, Dwarven Excavation and Nomengard, both say that even second level characters will find specific elements challenging, and they both include actual dungeons with multiple dangerous encounters. So if just one encounter might severely weaken a first level party, then the others, while easier, could become deadly. Umbridge Hill, on the other hand, is really designed as a single encounter. Here's part of the overview. Adabra Gwyn, a midwife and apothecary devoted to Shantea, goddess of agriculture, resides here. A manticore, driven out of the mountains by Siravane the White Dragon, attacks the windmill shortly before the adventurers arrive. Essentially, as the party arrives, they see the manticore trying to break into the windmill and Adabra shouting for help from an upstairs window. They can either fight the manticore, which I do not recommend, or they can negotiate, and the guide states that 25 gold pieces or a few pounds of meat will satiate the manticore, though it may eventually return with its mate. However the party handles it, according to the guide, Adabra declines to return to Phandalin, but she'll give the party a potion of healing and write a note for the town master confirming her safety. Overall, this is a short mission, so you could add a random encounter during the party's travel to Umbridge Hill, but if they won't have time to rest, that might be a bad idea. Even level 1 characters at full health will struggle fighting a manticore. It's a CR 3 creature, so according to D&D, combat with a manticore is a fair fight for a level 3 party. That said, we don't want to discourage our players from combat if that's their preferred solution. So here are my suggestions for making the fight more fair, or at least more interesting. 1. The manticore is emaciated. Since the dragon pushed it from its home territory, finding food has been difficult. Reduce its max HP from 68 to 50. Number two, the manticore is young. Maybe its parents were killed by the dragon, or maybe it's helping the adults find food in their new territory. Have its HP, lower its AC, and no multi-attack. Number three, the manticore wants to survive. Whether healthy, starved, or young, it doesn't want to fight to the death, so it will fly away when it's reduced to half its max hit points. Number four, the manticore wants a potion. Somehow, it knows Adabra is a healer, and it needs a potion to heal its mate or child after the dragon attacked. Number 5. The Manticore wants revenge. If the players make any statements about wanting to slay the dragon, the Manticore will spare them and maybe even offer to join the fight when the day comes. This encounter also includes an ancient dwarven graveyard and some ruins attached to the windmill. But as written, they're a little lacking, so here are some ways you can enhance this encounter's location. 1. Buried Treasure The ruined home attached to the windmill once housed squatting adventurers who buried a plus one dagger in the fireplace, mentioned in its description. Number two, Haunted Hill. Dwarven ghosts rise from the nearby cairns and battle at night. Number three, Ancestral Home. I'm pretty sure the guide does not state Adabra's race anywhere, so maybe she's a dwarf and she won't leave because her ancestors are buried here. Otherwise, I highly suggest letting your players have a chance at persuading her to return to Phandalin, despite what the book says. That way, they might technically complete their first objective. Now check out the videos on your screen for gameplay of the Umbridge Hill quest and more from the D&D Essentials Kit. Thank you for watching and keep building.